welcome to the instructional part of the video. You can get tabs and backing tracks if you go to my website, www.erichaugenguitar.com. For information about the sound tools I'm using today, go ahead and click on the description box below in your YouTube player. One more thing, thank you so much to everybody who supports me in all the various ways that you do. There is now one more way which you can support me. I am on Patreon slash Eric Haugen Guitar. And now to the lesson. Okay, let us begin with the finger picking. The main principle of all finger picking, let's remember, is that our thumb is the timekeeper. So I would step one, get your thumb going back and forth between the A and D strings. Step dos, or two. Uh, let's get an A sus two chord going on. Just an A minor if you take off your index finger. And then let's do this with the standard landslide style Travis picking, which is thumbs going back and forth. After each thumb comes an upper note. That's the first half of the first bar. There we go. Part one. Part two. When you come back, you're going to hammer on the thumb, zero to two, at the same time, hammer on the zero to one. And I, you know, I just hammer on the other one too, just in case I accidentally, you know, fart across it, well then it'll be the right note. That's step two. Oops. Now that's the first bar, so you'd practice that a bunch. And then the next piece. By then, you'd take your, your hand off of an A minor and be kind of thinking more just A and D. And that's still that same thumb's driving it. After that first thumb note, again open B. That's the first half of the second bar. And then the second half of the second bar, that's tricky. So with the first thumb you'd have a pull off from 1 to 0 on that A, or sorry, B string. Thumb moves up to get that beat 4, after that an open G. So it's four pieces woven together. Piece one, piece two, piece three, piece four to make the riff. is really cool. Of course, the Dolly Parton original version is capo 4. But this is based off of the super hip and funky version that somebody brilliantly put up on the internet at 33 RPM. And then I was like, well, what if I start to arrange the melody? it is. Let's look. A. Yep. C. A little kind of Neil Young fill in there. The melody is on that fifth fret of the, that's a D tone on a G chord. So yeah, I bring around a power chord. I pop an open G. There's our Joe. There's that melody. blues fill. Yeah, so I snuck in fills and walks and just the stuff that I like to do because I'm me. Uh, bluesy fill. 1030 A pentatonic minor and then so that's our I'm begging don't you take my man. That's our 2 and 0. You know, that's up against that G chord. So I have my ring finger down there on the three to anchor it. And then the don't take my man two on the, that's a B tone, two on the A string. Come back around. And 
was like, let me jump the melody an octave. To jump the melody an octave, I did a, a fill to get into it. And another blues slash minor fill. Four, three on that B string. That's a Dave Rawlings thing. Use that open B as a melody tone. Five, zero. There we are back to that A. That's our C. I'm doing really a C sus too. Five and five, three. I'll bar it. Get a knee kind of thing. Yeah. So we got that C. I forget what I do. Hold on. Yeah, I do a G chord here, you know, based off of this bar structure. And then I invert it. Seven. Sorry, nine, seven, eight, seven, which is, you know, a C shaped G if you're thinking caged, which I am. Seven and eight and seven. And there's that little vocal harmony that comes in there, which is off of an A minor. So that's I'm flat on the eight and eight, hammer on to the 10, back to the five, and then I do a little blues fill. So that's again, that's just comfort zone right there. That's a standard minor pentatonic with the, with the flatted fifth, because that's the good note. So that is just eight, seven, five, that. Get that five, I'm big enough, you don't break my man. Comes back to that kind of melody there. Five, back it up, because here we come to a G. That's all I'm doing, just zero, three, three. Still thinking that G there. Four and three. Back to the thingy. And there's like a little that, that's overdubbed, or is that pedal steel that does it? But anyway, I did it on guitar. So you do half of a riff. Yeah. And you sneak it in right there. Six, five, seven, and then open up there on that high E. And then, that's right, there's our chorus. The verse is actually like the same structure. Let me just make sure that. Is in tune there. Uh, so then we're at a verse, which is pretty similar, really. So it's like almost the same thing. I'm just doing A, C, and then I might do a, and then a G, or sorry, a D against the G chord. Yeah, so I had this idea of like kind of doing half the melody low, half the melody high. That's what you'll see me do. I'll do one side all low and like, all, and then I'll bring it up. I don't know why I had that idea. I did though. That's a little chromatic walk up to that tone there, that, that second fray of the A. Oh, we're back to that G. Same kind of thing as the chorus, really, using the root of the G there, and there's my melody note up here. And then that same, don't break down. I forget what the lyric is. But then I put in a big run. Just because. So it's another minor combined with flat five kind of blues run. going up. Yeah, so the, the upper part is using that one, two, oh, two. And notice how much I'm weird. I, you know, I'm not classically trained. My, my finger style playing comes much more from I don't know, Chet Atkins, Lindsey Buckingham, 
uh, Rye Cooter, people who everybody does it their own way. So when you see me do runs, I don't do them with, you know, you got a couple of options really. Can you see this hand? You can do, and that's a Nick Drake thing to use a thumb and then an index. But I don't like that because I can't get the two tones to sound even. So a lot of times if I'm doing runs, I'll do them like a bass player because I play some bass too, where I'll use these two like that. But I don't know how right that is. Um, I'm sure someone will comment and tell me what the right way is. But it works for me because I can get those two to sound the same. And let's see. So again, there's our A. There's that C sus two. What was I doing? Oh, I got lost in my melody. Oh yeah, I just keep it there. That G there, that A minor there. Yep, and that same little blues fill from the chorus, really. And I don't know what I put like a that's like to me that's like a Mark Knopfler thing, just a pretty little. Ooh. So I'm doing my A to C sus two to G to A with a blues fill. Back to the G, G inversion, and then a little, a little G fill again off of that one. Yeah, also sounds like the David Gilmore thing. Uh, seven, or sorry, eight, seven. You know, uh, out of that shape. Eight, seven, eight, seven. Yep, and then 12, 10. And I know I'm back to an A minor. So that's 13 and 12. And then a kind of a little sixth fill. So that's eight and seven, seven and seven, five and five again. Yeah, using those two now. Yeah. And then this is definitely some Rhiannon vibe. Because then I come down with a, like as it's kind of getting back towards the, the chorus. So I do a, oh, and that's Andy Summers too. O, oh, two, four, that makes that A minor nine in a different way. And then I do a little thirds thing, which that's, yeah, straight out of Rhiannon. Four, three, hammer on to five and five. Yeah. And then a little thing, I was like, well, let's see. get back around to another chorus. And so on and so forth. Good luck. If you haven't yet clicked on the Jolene at 33 RPM video that's floating around YouTube, it's really cool. This song works so well slowed down. It just, it turns it from, you know, a great Dolly Parton song that we all like a lot. It almost sounds like a Bruce Springsteen. I don't know, it's really cool. So I, I you know, when I stumbled upon that years ago, really, I was like, that's, I just thought it was the coolest thing. And then I thought, hold on though, what if, I haugened it. What if I arranged it um, at that tempo? And so that's what we end up with here. Um, technical considerations, there's obviously the thumb finger independent stuff to be, you know, that's worthy of practice. There's some nice little bluesy runs and, and connectors in there. And those are the main things. And it really was just like, it was a neat idea I had. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.